Hi, uh, my name is Jay Powell. I'm the Acting Executive Director here at the SPCA. I started off at the SPCA in 2008 as an inspector doing cruelty and animal welfare investigations. I then went on to become the Operations Manager where I helped run the animal welfare services at the organisation. I left the organisation in 2011 to pursue my veterinary studies uh, in Melbourne. I went into uh, vet school to upgrade my knowledge and skills uh, with regards to uh, all things animals. I used to rescue kittens or dogs that I found on the street um, uh, as a child. Uh, but one thing I always wondered was why were there so many unwanted animals at the, at the shelter? I always wondered why animals were sometimes treated as lesser beings even though they were sentient like us. I find the suffering of any sentient being troubling and long ago I made the decision to be part of the solution. Back in vet school, I used to organise animal ethics discussion sessions where we used to sit around uh, fortnightly and we used to talk about all sorts of issues uh, to do with animal, uh, animal welfare and the use of animals in society. There were disagreements, uh, of course, at times, but that's the fun of discussing these, uh, these issues. Animal welfare issues are complex. They involve many different facets and you know, they, there sometimes isn't one right answer. Um, and I think it's very healthy to, to bring in different sides of the debate um, have that discussion and then find a solution that works for everyone involved. The state of animal welfare in a country is determined by the culture of the people, the religion, socio-economic factors, the politics. All these things come together to influence how animals in a society are treated. In the last couple of decades, it's been very heartening to see many different animal welfare groups join the movement. I think this evolution of our society is a, is a very positive change, showing that we now think not just for ourselves, but for others. Our inspectorate receives about 70 uh, complaints from the public uh, every month. Some of those are cruelty cases, cases when an animal has been intentionally uh, harmed, uh, but the majority are animal welfare uh, cases, where a pet owner has, has done something or has omitted to do something that has led to the compromise of the welfare of the animal. So for example, dogs in cages is a very common complaint that we receive. People bring an animal home either because they think an animal needs to be kept in that way or they cannot find any other solutions to a problem like poor toilet training or destruction of furniture and they end up then confining these animals in, in cages or tying them up on leashes for extended periods of time. Uh, we have rabbits, for example, that are kept in really small cages. Uh, again, because people think they are natural, uh, that's the way they're supposed to be kept. But they're kept on wire mesh flooring that can harm their feet. Uh, they are fed poor diets of only carrots. Uh, I've seen that before when I was an inspector. Um, uh, so some of, a lot of these things stem from actually a lack of awareness. It's not about pointing fingers and accusing people. It's about saying, how can we help you? How can we give you the resources, the support, the education to be better pet owners? The recent spate of cruelty that we have seen in Singapore is, is, is very disheartening. If you talk about outright cruelty to animals, the outright intentional harm of an animal, there seems to be a particular sort of person with a certain background or a certain uh, uh, way of doing things that ends up uh, doing those acts. It's not, it's not the average person on the street that goes out to intentionally uh, harm animals. So a lot of these people sometimes also require, require care. Um, uh, and they require support themselves. Uh, they may be having and dealing with, uh, with certain uh, uh, mental issues that requires uh, society uh, uh, to support them. You know, I tell people I work in animal welfare and sometimes ask, why don't you, you care about people? Why don't you look after people's welfare first? My answer is always, why can't we do both? And many a time, the lives of people and animals are intertwined. When you improve animal welfare, you improve people welfare. You know, if you improve the welfare of, of your society, the, animal, the welfare of your animals improve. It's, it's intertwined. Uh, I think the, the fate of animals, humans and the environment are all closely connected. And I think we should care about all of them and not just one. We are very excited that we have now moved to this new bigger facility at uh, Sungai Tengah. Riding on that bigger space, 
with continual public support. We hope to, to do even more to improve the standards of animal welfare in Singapore.